explored a lot of those throughout this series. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about queer neighborhoods of the future and sort of looking past the past and even past the present and trying to think what makes um, a livable life for queer people in a space that makes that possible uh, in the future and in, in a time uh, after now. A lot of the um, uh, notability that's come out of this uh, speaker series has uh, reflected itself through the media in all sorts of fascinating ways. Um, the AP did a story, I don't know how many of you uh, saw it, but it, went, uh, it was national and even international to some extent, um, uh, that basically said that um, after AIDS was over, um, <laughs> that uh, places like the Castro have become safe for straight people and babies and queers with babies to move in. And uh, despite the general sensitivity of the, of the author of this piece, and she is actually uh, very uh, sort of nuanced normally in the way in which she, she reads things uh, about our community, um, it's, it's unavoidable to look at how she's basically portraying a culture of life coming after a culture of death. Um, how futurity, sort of the, the vision of the future, is, is necessarily a story of integration. Um, it's necessarily sort of a rush toward a shared humanity that puts us forward into the future as opposed to this community that has been um, devastated and seems to be mired in either death or dying or the past. And so there's something very disturbing about um, the way in which that story um, was constituted. Uh, there was a New York Times article uh, this Sunday, actually, uh, that basically said Hell's uh, Kitchen is the new Chelsea, which was the new West Village. And it's kind of represented in terms of fashion trends, sort of orange is the new black, or post-gay is the new gay. And... <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> FTM is the new male, you know. Um, and, and, and then there was a letter to the editor in the current BAR, uh, which wonders whether uh, the decline of the Castro as a gayberhood is, is just, uh, quote, the ebb and flow of moving and evolving neighborhoods. And the, the author calls for us uh, to, quote, allow the sunlight to come into the gay ghettos uh, in too many of our hearts, sort of making the gay ghetto itself into a closed off space in our own hearts that we need to open up to the straight community and to more diverse um, peoples who might be moving into places like the Castro. And so this really challenges us to, uh, how do we speak about the future of queer neighborhoods without sounding reactionary or nostalgic or passe? Uh, does integration into a broader society necessarily mean that we have to cede our own hard-won spaces uh, in urban locations? Who gains the most from these processes? Uh, who might lose out? Uh, what does it mean about our culture and the way in which main, the mainstream media and even our own media represents it uh, when the viability of a livable space as perverse or as non-heteronormative, um, as genuinely different in terms of its possibility, as seen as something that we should have gotten over by now? And so, and so these are sort of the, the general questions that led me to thinking sort of you know, what does it even mean to ask for a queer neighborhood of the future? And um, I'm anticipating that our, our panelists will have things as, as varied and provocative uh, uh, to say uh, as we can possibly imagine. I just want to end my introduction on um, something that was in Beyond Cron uh, this morning from uh, housing activist Tommy Avakoli Mecca. He was lamenting uh, the push to build a yellow brick road in the Castro to try to lure uh, tourists uh, back into a neighborhood that, uh, that uh, some merchants are concerned no longer is viable or exciting as a gay destination. And he, he warned that, um, quote, transforming the Castro into a theme park dedicated to a gay icon of yesteryear won't solve the real problem of the neighborhood, its loss of identity. The Castro is quickly disintegrating into a symbol of a bygone era that has no more tourist appeal than Betsy Ross's grave. He then uh, calls for plans that will concretely move the neighborhood forward uh, by making it more affordable to artists and to activists. Uh, the Castro Coalition as well, which is one of the co-sponsors of the series, advocates such a move 
alongside establishing queer and HIV uh, nonprofit and cultural space in the neighborhood uh, as part and parcel of these big city and developer plans that are moving forward, sort of insisting that the future is something that we have a right to and we can name the conditions on which it might move forward. So um, the panelists that we have tonight, um, and I will uh, just move from that onto this in, in that particular order. Um, I'm very, very excited about really an incredible group of people. Susan Stryker uh, is the former uh, executive director of the GOBT Historical Society, a noted queer historian, uh, internationally renowned transgender scholar, uh, creator of the Emmy award-winning documentary Screaming Queens, The Riot at Compton Cafeteria, and co-editor of Routledge's groundbreaking new transgender studies reader, one of my favorite people in the whole world. Oh, I'm excited <laughs> to have you here. Um, Kibo Drew is an award-winning poet, dancer, and writer whose focus is on African diasporas in the Americas. Drew is a Horizons Foundation and Castro for All Ricky Williams Fellow, working with <coughs> queer women of color media arts projects, and has performed at venues all throughout Europe and the United States. Tito Vandermeyer was born and raised in the Netherlands, uh, lived in Amsterdam for 17 years before coming to the United States for postgraduate studies at Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> moved to the Castro in 1995 uh, and has a master's degree in social geography and geographical information systems from the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, he's uh, the vice president of Kappa and one of the founders of the Castro Coalition, and currently working as a, a GIS, Global Information Systems? <laughs> Geographical Information Geographical Systems. Yeah. Nextbus. For Nextbus, and they're the ones who provide us the real-time information for when the hell that day church is gonna get there. <laughs> uh, Andrea Shorter uh, came out during the uh, mid-1980s in the midst of the AIDS crisis. She resided in the Castro since migrating from Riverside, California in 1991 after working for the California Assembly Legislature. She has sought to explore the meaning of LGBTQ community empowerment through her travels for various countries, including South Africa, Israel, Russia, Denmark, Holland, and Europe. Uh, she's a former trustee of the San Francisco Community College District and uh, currently serves on the San Francisco Commission on the Status of Women. Um, Joy Silver is responsible for the creation of Rainbow Vision. Um, it's a part of a, a vision of creating GLBT communities that has been a goal of hers for 27 years, and this year marks the, the real success of Rainbow Vision. It's very exciting. Um, before that, she um, worked for 25 years in the music business, um, in resort sales and management, and in, uh, as Vice President of Marketing and Business Development for Choices Women Medical and Mental Health Centers in New York City. She um, was a member of the SAGE subcommittee on, uh, subcommittee, sorry, on Senior Housing in New York City and is currently a member of LGAME, which is Lesbian and Gay Aging Issues Network Leadership Council at the American Society for Aging. She's also on the board of the GOPT Historical Society and we're lucky to have her. Um, and then last but certainly not least, we have Henry Erbach, who uh, arrived in San Francisco just six months ago, a baby here, uh, to begin working at SF MoMA as the Helen Hilton Razor Curator of Architecture and Design. Before that, he ran Henry Erbach Architecture, a gallery of contemporary art and, ar and architecture in New York, for nearly 10 years. He has degrees in architecture and the history and theory of architecture from Columbia and Princeton universities. He's published and taught widely, uh, was the co-curator of the 1994 Qu uh, Queer Space Exhibition at Storefront for Art and Architecture, and has published es essays on the closet, sex clubs, the nocturnal city, and related topics. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's start with Tito. Mm -hmm.